Hello everyone, it is Hannah, your Sparkling Spectrumite, and today I wanted to try to show you um, a way to make your own cover minders. So if you don't know, a cover minder is kind of a magnet that holds back your plastic on your diamond painting in order for you to get to the sticky spot on your canvas. And a few months ago, Katie with Diamonds and Washi had put up a really great video on how to make your own cover minders with enamel pens. And I had followed that video that she had made with my own pens that I got from Timu. And sure enough, I was able to make my own. So I made this one. And again, just had the magnet glued on the back. I made this one, which I thought was really cute. And then I made this really fun Harry Potter one. So with again, just the magnet on the back. So knowing that you can do this easily with enamel pins, because typically they have a pretty flat back that, are, that makes it easier to glue a magnet on, I thought it'd be fun to try something a little different and try them with, you know, kind of like um, costume jewelry or I guess brooches is what you can also call them as well. And I finally had the opportunity to because I had found these costume jewelry pens or brooches at my Hobby Lobby. And for those of you who might be um, out of the States, Hobby Lobby is a huge chain craft store we have here. And I happen to have one that's like five minutes away from my house. So it's really, really, really easy for me to go there very frequently. And I found these on clearance. So I found these cool little um, pens. So as you can see, they're, they're just pens on the back. Uh, at for clearance. So typically these go for like, see this one goes for 10 and it was marked down to only $2.50. So they were at a really nice reduced price. So I thought this would really be a fun way to try my hand at making a cover minder that maybe didn't have that flat back like an enamel pen does. So I thought this would be a great opportunity. So these are the pieces that I found. So I have this little cute like frog prints here. I have this giraffe hut, and as you can see, this is again, this is an $11 uh, pin usually, and instead it was $274. So really nice clearance. Uh, this one is probably my favorite because it's just got so many colors in it. And this was typically $12 and it was reduced to $5. And then this one, it's not on the thing because I was already starting to kind of mess with it again a bit, but I've got this cute little fish here, and this was usually a $9 pen, and it was on sale for $2.24. So what I'm going to do is um, some of the tools that I'm going to use today is I'm going to use these small different sets of uh, pliers and wire cutters. So you can get these in your typical um, like jewelry making session at a craft store. So I've got kind of these wider nose pliers. I've got kind of some thinner like needle nose ones. And then this one is actually a wire cutter. So this is like for a lot of people who are interested in making jewelry and they use the wiring. Uh, this is a way to cut your wire. So I've got those tools over here, or you know what? They're not in frame, so I should probably put them in frame. Woo, and those are magnets. So I'll put this one there. Then I've got these magnets here. So they're different sizes. I ordered these from Amazon. So as you can see, they're just a combination of different magnets. So some smaller, some larger. Because you know, with some of these pieces, you may not have to use the largest magnet. Because again, my goal is, is to not have the magnet show uh, from the front. So magnets, and I'll make sure I link all these. And then the last thing is just the E600, E6000. And this stuff is what I used for my enamel pins. And it works really, really well. However, be really, really careful because if you get this on you, you're gonna have a problem. So make sure you do not get it on you because it's super, super strong. Um, it's like, <laughs> Basically, I think it's even more stronger than, uh, or more strong than super glue. And also be careful because it's flammable. So like, make sure you don't have any candles burning or anything like that, just for safety. 
So we're gonna use some of this. So first thing I'm gonna do is I really wanna try this one because obviously this one is just really one of my favorites. So, um, so as you can see guys, this video, it's really gonna be kind of trial and error and we'll see if it works. So I'm just gonna take this backing off and okay. So I'm kind of seeing here and I'm seeing the back of it and I can kind of tell, so as you can tell, it's not a flat back like an enamel pen. So you're gonna have to kind of get creative on where you wanna put your magnets. So, but the first thing is uh, you have to remove this pin bar here. So that's the very first thing that we have to do is we have to take this, this pin bar out because um, with it, we can't really attach a magnet without this sticking up and it won't, you know, lie flat. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my metal cutters here and actually I'm gonna take, I'm gonna do this and just pin it back. And what I'm gonna do, so I'm just gonna grab it. I'm gonna get a good hold and I'm just, woo, let's see. I gotta get a good hold, good angle, make sure it's got a good squeeze. And I'm just gonna start twisting and haul, oh, look at that. It came right off. So I'm gonna put that over here. So that's pretty nice. And actually it's not really rough. Now, uh, with some of these rough ends where these pieces come off, you could maybe sand it down like with a Dremel tool or maybe possibly even like a, a metal emery board. But really this edge, like I can run my thumb over it and it's not poking me or anything like that. So I'm not really gonna worry about it. So now I need to take this end off. So once again, and again, guys, um, I will link the video down below because this was really a great video that Katie did when she used enamel pens. And look at that, that came right off. There's the piece. So there you go. So you've got a little more of a good surface to put your uh, magnet on. So kind of looking, so it's kind of a little deeper here. I'm thinking this very top is probably going to be the best place to put my magnet. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna move these aside and I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna put it right here so you can kind of see it. And I think I'm gonna look at my different size magnets here and kind of see I'm thinking since this is a heavier piece or a bigger piece, probably a bigger magnet will do. But at the same time, I don't want it to peek through. So I'm gonna try my largest size magnet first. So it's right there and I'm gonna see, like if I put it there, if I kinda, I'm gonna kinda hold down the back here. Ah, see, but that'll kinda show through the toucan's head. See, you can kinda see it peeking out. So I'm gonna see if I can go a size smaller. So my next size, and again, these are really, these are pretty strong magnets. So we'll just kind of see. So if I put it, whoop, if I kind of put it there, if I, so if I glue it just right, I can make it so, as you can see, you're not gonna see it peeking out. So we're gonna try this size, and who knows, this is kind of trial and error. So we'll see if this is going to um, fit this, or see if this is enough uh, strength, this magnet is strong enough to hold the weight of this, because this is a little heavier. But you know what, we're not gonna know until we try. And frankly, when you get these things on clearance, it's kind of the best way to try them out so you're not spending a whole lot of money. So I'm gonna open my glue here. And I'd already used this before, so ooh. So see, it kind of sticks out. And I'm gonna put my cap right side up so it's not like sticking to anything. And I'm just gonna stick a really big thing glob of glue right there. I'm gonna just lay it on its side. So as you can see, I've got my big thing of glue right there. So I'm just going to really, now you could use tweezers if you want to, but I'm just gonna kinda lay it on there just like that. Now the good thing is, is with this glue, you don't need a whole lot of pressure and it cures to metal really quickly. So I'm just gonna set it up like that 
And let's just make sure. So, nope, no peeking. Magnet is not peeking at all. Well, wait, is it a little bit? Oh, a little bit. There's a little bit of glue hanging off. So I'm gonna actually just use my tweezers because there's a little bit of glue. And these are old tweezers. I don't know about you, but I have so many tweezers. I'm okay using these to just make sure that glue is not hanging off. There we go, that's better. So I'm just gonna place that there. And again, I'm not gonna put the other side of the magnet onto it either because I don't want him to accidentally, like even if a little bit of extra glue got on that magnet and I put the other one on, it would glue the magnets together. We don't want that. We want it to be able to separate. Okay, so that's the first one. So we'll see how that goes. So next one, I'm gonna use my fish. And now my fish I was kind of practicing with so I am just going to go ahead and put the next one. I'm thinking probably around here. And again, the nice thing is with this glue is you don't really have to have your magnet flat for it to work. So as you can tell from my pin here, this one is kind of a bit at an angle as you can see, but guess what? It works just fine. And also guys, um, these cover minders that I'm making, these are not for the intention of me selling or anything like that. These are simply just for me. I do love cover minders, so I wanted to try and make some for myself. And sorry, if you hear my dogs. So yeah, I did wanna make that clear because um, there are so many great cover minder shops out there. And so it's like, I, I don't need to be selling my own. <laughs> like these are really just for me to try out and you know, have some fun with. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, and it's bad guys, but it's kind of like, I find like the bigger the glob, kind of the better, like you can kind of be generous with it. And then I'm using a smaller magnet and I'm just gonna kind of drop it like that. And again, see, this is kind of at an angle, but that is okay, it's not gonna ruin it. So I'm just gonna let that sit just like that. Now, once you glue these, it says to wait 24 hours for them to dry. And then if you really want them to cure well, then you wanna wait probably about 48 to 72. So there's that one. So I'm gonna put that over here. Okay, now, let's see here, move this. Uh, I'm gonna do my little frog guy just because he's so cute. So I'm just gonna tear this off. So again, nothing. we'll see how easily this one comes off. So again, you've got your little, this one, okay. So I'm gonna take, these seem to work the best. So I'm gonna try that again. Kinda of just go from the top here. Ooh. Okay, get a really good grip. Ooh, that wasn't a good grip. And I'm just gonna twist. Check that out, came right off. And again, no rough. And actually, look, if you see that, that's pretty flat. There's like no nub sticking up. So this one should actually be pretty easy to put a magnet on. Okay, get grip on this one and give it a twist, twist, twist. Oh, that didn't want to do it for me. Let me try it again. Hmm. This one doesn't want to want to cooperate. That's okay. I just need to get it really good. And if you can get it close to the base, woo, there we go. That's even better. So you've got these two flat stubs here. Very smooth, again, you could kind of sand it a bit if you wanted to, but I don't think it's gonna make a difference. Or the other thing is, just cover these with a little dot of your glue and let it dry, and then you don't even have to sand them. So you know what, I'm gonna try that with this. I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue here just to cover those little nubs. There, just like that. That way you don't even have to sand them and they're nice and smooth. So I think what I'm gonna do is trying to think. I might do a different size magnet for this one. Let me see. 
Let me see what I got. Mm. No, you know what? Actually, that is a good size. So I'm going to stick with that. So this is kind of my medium size. And I am just going to put this at an angle. I'm going to put the glue just kind of there where it's at the the crest there between the crown and his head. And I'm just gonna drop it on just like that. Now again, as you can see, it's at an angle. But if I kind of move it a little bit up and hold it there, there we go. That should still be, oh, no, it slid. This one's a little trickier. That's all right though, we'll get it. There we go. I want it kind of like that, because again, I don't want my magnet to show. So we are just gonna try actually slide it a little more there. That's what I want. Just like that. And yep, you can't see it. So I'm just gonna hold down a little harder there. Again, making sure I don't get glue on my fingers. And guys, I apologize, I know my nails look terrible, but part of the reason I didn't want to do my nails because I knew I'd be working with this stuff and I'm like, hmm, is that really a good idea, Hannah? To do your nails before you do something like this? All right, there we go. I'm gonna let it stay there. Put it right here. All right, last one. Now, this is my really heavy one, so this one I'm definitely probably gonna have to do a bigger magnet, but. I just love this giraffe head. I thought it was really cool and it's really pretty. And then like you could see, these are like pieces of like, uh, almost like embroidery floss that make his little, his little nubs up there. So I thought that was cute. Sorry guys, if you hear my dogs again, Ralph is into something. Okay, so here we go. Like that. So this one. I'm probably gonna wanna do at that angle again. So, cause again, that's kinda, when you don't have a flat back. And again, guys, this is not like a proper how-to. This is just me kinda showing a way that you could do it, but there's probably other ways. And so it's up to you how you wanna try it. I just really wanted to show like, you know, just how you could try it and just see where it goes. Okay, I got a good grip, twist comes right off. Like I barely had to put any pressure on that. This is super smooth too. So that's not, that doesn't even have to be. Now I'm gonna do this again, close to the base. Squeeze, twist. I mean, barely, I, again, barely any pressure. But again, because if you don't want those rough ends, just put a little bit of glue here. So it's, you know, I don't have to worry about a rough end. And a little bit of glue there, 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 no rough ends. Now this piece, I definitely want to do my bigger magnet because it's a bigger piece. And we'll see if this magnet is um, big enough. Because here's the thing too, um, you know, some people like me, sometimes I work on a flat surface and then sometimes I work on an easel. So if my diamond painting's at an eagle, uh, as a, at a, I'm sorry, at an angle on an easel, there we go, got my words right. Um, the last thing I want is for like my cover minder to be slipping down because it was too heavy for my magnet. Um, so I really do wanna make sure that these are the right size magnets. Now, if I'm on a flat surface, if I'm diamond painting on a flat surface, that probably won't really matter because, you know, they're not gonna slide when, uh, it's on a flat surface, but if you do use, you know, an easel or if you have, um, I know many, many uh, try diamond painting like on a drafting table, uh, yeah, you definitely um, don't want to have your, so I think what I'm going to do is see there's these ridges here, so I'm almost thinking like probably like this at an angle. And we're just gonna try it and see. I think that, ooh, look, I got some on my thumb. There we go. 
Oh, there we go. If I do it like that, that should be okay. So we're gonna try, ooh, but that'll poke through. All right, so this is probably the most difficult, but we're just gonna try. And again, though, I find that it's crazy, but the more glue you use, it's kind of better. Like it's a little more forgiving because I really want to put it at an angle, but I don't want it to show. Okay, that doesn't look like it's showing. So actually, wow, did I get it right on the first try? That'd be amazing. Okay, so I'm going to do it just like that. And we're going to see if this angle is right. I really want it more up. Now I could do two small ones each on the ears, but I really don't want to use two magnets. I would really rather use, now let me see if that's still going to stay. Uh, that's poking up. Uh, that's not poking up too bad. I think I'm going to keep it like this, guys. I think if I just hold it like this for a few minutes, so it just starts to stay and not slide. That should be good. So we'll see. That would be better. Uh, yeah, okay. So I think we're gonna leave it right there and let that dry. Okay, so I've got all four of my pieces here. And again, guys, this is kind of trial and error. So we're gonna see how this works, but um, you know, I figured it would be fun to at least try and um, show you guys my process and then guess what if you find a way to do it better you can let me know because that would be awesome so we are going to wait um our 24 hours so i'm going to stop for right now and then in about 24 hours we'll see how these turn out okay guys hello again it has actually been 48 hours since I started this little cover minder project. So I wanted the glue to really uh, cure and adhere to the metal. So instead of waiting 24 hours, I waited 48 hours. So I am going to go ahead and flip these over and attach the magnets to the back. So they have the full set of magnets. Let me make sure I'm sizing them right, yep. All right, so we've got that one. Flip this over. All right. I think I used a bigger one for that. Yep, my, or it's a little bigger, but that's okay. Flip this one over. Remember, I used a smaller one for that. There we go. And a larger one for that. All right. All right. So they have their magnets on the back of them. Now what I want to do is test them out and I actually want to test them out on a slanted surface because like I said before, I actually typically diamond paint using an easel or again, like I said before, those of you who may use a, um, a drafting table that, you know, kind of slants down. So we're going to try it and uh, see how it works. So here we go. Okay, so this is typically what I uh, use to hold all my cover minders. Now, unfortunately, I've gotten to where my collection is so big, they don't all fit on this anymore. So I'm actually in the market to look for a bigger one. But what I have here, and I'm sorry about the focus, but what I have here is I have just one of those magnetic dry erase boards and it's propped up just on one of these holders here. Like this is like what you'd use to like hold up like a plate or something like that, you know, like decorative plates. And so I just have it propped up like this. And I think I got this board, I honestly guys, I think it was like $6 at Walmart. But um, yeah, so I think magnetic whiteboards are a great way to store your cover minders if that's what you're looking for. So I have it vertically, because again, I work kind of more on an angled surface. So I'm gonna test these out to kind of see if they're gonna slide down or not. So I'm gonna start with smallest. So I've got my fish here. Let's see how it goes. Okay, I'm not seeing any sliding there. It's staying in, in, in place, that's good. Okay, let's try my little frog here. Nice, so far so good. Okay, we're gonna do this next piece. This is a little bit lighter, but it is bigger. So this one was kind of one I was worried about. I used a bigger magnet 
but we'll see how it goes because it is a little heavier. So, so far I don't see any sliding. Pretty happy with that. Okay, yay, okay, this is a good thing. All right, and the last piece is giraffe head. This was definitely by far the heaviest piece. So I'm actually gonna move this frog over here because I wanna put this at the top to see if we see it slide any at all. So here we go, moment of truth. Oh, let me slide it down because I realize it's not in frame. All right. I am not seeing any sliding. <gasps> this is awesome. I'm so excited. So there we go, guys. This is an awesome way, first of all, to hold your cover minders if that's what you like. But if you want to, you know, try your hand at, you know, just having fun and being a little crafty and making your own cover minder. Uh, this is a way to do it. So I am super, super happy with how these turned out. I think they're really fun. Uh, they're definitely blingy enough, that is for sure. And again, they were definitely not expensive at all because I got them all on clearance. So there we go. So that really just kind of um, is what this video was about, guys, is just seeing, you know, if you found a uh, you know, some old vintage uh, costume jewelry or brooches, whether at, you know, the thrift store or on sale somewhere, uh, you know, before you pass it by, maybe think about how it could make a fun cover minder. So I will make sure also, again, this was all inspired by Katie with Diamond and Washi, how she had made uh, cover minders out of enamel pens. So I just wanted to kind of, you know, take a, a step in a different direction and see what else you could do as far as making cover minders with other different pieces. So um, I will make sure to link that video down below though, as that was definitely uh, the best tutorial I've seen as far as uh, making cover minders. And uh, yeah, guys, so um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope it brought you a little bit of joy as it always brings joy to me making them. And uh, yeah, have fun making some cover minders and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.